Hi. Does anybody and everybody understand English? If not, make sure you have the headphones, because you want to hear that. Okay, um, so I'm Sarah, and in my clock right now, it's six o'clock, it's sunset. I'm in, I am in the boat. There's a 20 people around me. There's a waves and sea and water from all the sides. Should I jump or should I stay in? I would decide. Should I survive? But I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Let me stop here for a second and take you back from my life. I grew up in Damascus city in Syria, where the church ring bells and the, mass, the call for the prayer in the mask is the beginning of the day. I was a normal teenager. I go to school and I went to a law school in Syria and I practice swimming every day since I start walking. I go out with friends on the weekends and I just live normally like every teenager. Suddenly, there's like a small snake just came in to our life. We don't know what is it. And it's like really evil thing. And it doesn't have a race or politics or religion. It's just a thing that is just make darkness everywhere. It came to the time that I would go out every day to go to school or to go to my swimming pool. I don't know if I'm coming back. So every day for like four years, when I say goodbye for my mom on the door, or my mom say goodbye, or my sisters or my dad, we don't know if we're coming back. And we don't know if we're seeing each other again. So yes, I did jump. I jumped in the water because there was a voice inside me saying that I should do something. I'm a swimmer, and it's obvious, I think, I'm just 10 years old here, and I'm now 22, so I'm old. Uh, so, I decided to jump and use the thing that I've always been taught since I was a kid in just these three hours. I jump in the water, I hold the boat with one hand, and I use my other two legs and my hand, and I pushed. That was simply you do when you're stuck. And then later on, my 17 years old sister, she jumped in the water. So I've been thinking about how to save the 20 people. It came, it came, became to like, my sister is in the water. So I might lose myself, but it's fine for me, but I cannot be responsible for losing my sister. So we stopped fighting in the middle of the kiosk. You should go up, no, you should go up. No, you should go up and you should go up. And there's a people like, we are dying here. So we ended up being in the water for three and a half hours. And we made it safely to Greece, thank God. No one get injured, everybody was totally safe. And then, okay, we made it to the boat, we have a good life, and then now we are, like, we get into Europe but we didn't know that it's just the beginning. So then with the ferry, we get to Athens, and from Athens, by walking through the train tracks to get to Macedonia, and then to Serbia, and then to the hardest place ever on the map, and I'm sorry saying that, Hungary. I didn't know anything about the country before. I don't know the people, until now I don't know anybody. Till I came here today and I met a lot of Hungarians and made me feel released. I've been handcuffed, I've been thrown with shoes, I've been called a terrorist Muslim, I've been jailed in the age of 20 just because I was walking by. I didn't want to stay, I just, I'm just crossing, but that's what I get behind it. And then I want to ask a small question here. How many of you remember when the refugees marched from Budapest train station through the borders? So, yeah, I think a lot of you know about this. So I wasn't from the people who marched. I was, the, so after what the people marched, Germany decided to send buses to collect all the other refugees. So I was from the lucky ones who make it into these buses. And then to the Austrian borders, and then to Munich, and then to Berlin. 
And I made the journey after 25 days of being hungry, of sleeping on the street, no shower, no friends, just me and my sister. And we made it. And we've been so happy. After that, we try, okay, we want to go back to our normal life. We want to go back to swimming. So we get an um, opportunity to swim with one swimming club. And it was all fine. We're trying to go back to the old gold days when I was like looking like this as a swimmer. But suddenly I have a pain in my body. I didn't know what is it. I've been getting from the first level to the third and then fourth and then seventh and then I'm the last one. So what's going on? The doctor told me if I want to live normally, I have to quit swimming. Because of my crossing through Europe in the boat, I got three injuries. Two in my spine and one in my knee. And if I want to walk again, or if I want to lose my back, I should stop swimming. So you're telling me, after 25 days of hunger or suffering on the streets and crossing and being attacked for so many people because they don't even know me, because they think I'm different, but I'm just looking the same like you, I should stop swimming. So I have no family, I have no friends, I have no future, and the only thing in, in life that I can do, you're asking me to quit it. So I start to be alcoholist. I didn't, didn't have any plans. I didn't learn in my life to be something else than swimming. Yes, I go to law school, but it's just in my body. Later on, that happened the same time when I get my injury, my sister get elected to go to the Olympic team. I think many of you hear about the refugee Olympic team. So in the same time, I'm getting injury, and my sister going to the Olympic team, it was like really not the right time for that, for me to hear that. So my sister came to me and was like, oh my god, I get elected to the Olympic team. And I was like, yeah. She was like, I'm saying that I'm going to Rio. And I was like, good luck for you. It's something easy. I was so selfish to even just celebrate with my sister this one minute that I own it for her because my parents weren't there, and I was so selfish. But in the same time, my sister, without even knowing, she gave me a really hard slap on my face. You can stay in your bed for the next five months, but people doesn't care. Everybody having life, everybody living normally, and they're doing whatever they want. So I want to volunteer to just try to find a way to just survive again, you know? Be fit in the world. And I want to volunteer with a, a German NGO in Berlin because I speak fluent English so I can help the others, other refugees like me. So uh, what happened, that's my boss. She told me, okay, there's a talk for refugees in France. Do you want to go there and talk about your story? So I didn't care about the talk. I didn't write my story. I just want to go to France. So I said yes. I went to France, and then I gave the first speech ever in my life, but I didn't end up with a smile, I was crying. Because it was the first time that I hear my own story from my own self, and I feel how much heavy thoughts and feelings that I have inside me, but I didn't let it out. And I realized why I survived that night in the boat from the first First, I, why I'm here, why I still exist in this world, why I didn't die in the boat. When I go back to my own self, back in Syria, when you ask about Sarah, who's Sarah? Everybody told you, she's so rude. She has the strongest voice ever. I can take anything I want from you, but I'm with a nice, quiet way. So I was like, why I don't take this as a career? The word is the most strongest weapon ever right now. Why I don't just become professional and I just fight for the others with that. And I continue, I just keep traveling around and just saying my story, talking about the people. And I don't just hear in television and then I go give a talk. I see in my own eyes and then I give a talk. I live what are people living and then I give a talk. And then, in the middle of nowhere, I get a text on Facebook from a guy called Eric, 
and he's a volunteer in Greece when, with an organization called ERCI that it's help refugees boat land safely, what do you see right now here? And at the same time, he mentioned to me that this organization do a lifeguard training, so we teach kids how to swim, refugees' kids. So the kids at the beginning was like, are you crazy? Do you want me to be again in the same water that I crossed from? But all that changed in one day, when the sister's story came out. The kids started to go one by one, it was like, I want to be a professional swimmer, to be like the sister Mardini's. So when somebody told you that, would you go to Greece to see them or not? I cannot hear you. Would you go or not? So I decided to go and to meet the kids. And when I stand in the front of the kids, it was like, you're not even real. Are you the same person? They check up my Facebook and they check the same picture that believe that I'm here for them. And I end up from being two weeks to spend a whole year in Greece, from being inside a boat as a refugee to being a rescuer. I'm just there. That's how I transfer my story. I didn't been the victim. I changed it. I became the reason why I give hope to the others. After two months ago, I had to get a scholarship in Bard College Berlin, which I'm studying politics, because I believe that I'm blessed, and I'm lucky, and I'm a survivor. And all this energy inside me, I'm giving it back to the people. Because only the people, and again, only the people can change right now. You can change everything. And if all this journey that I did, everything I've been through, it make me a refugee, so I'm honored to be. And every single refugee should be honored to die in the streets or just to sleep on the streets. And I have one last question. So you brought me here today because I'm a hero. But what, we, what would you do if you are in your own boat? And thank you.